guys and welcome back to my channel and this new series that I call Journey to Med where I'm trying my best and my very hardest to help prospective medical applicants achieve their dreams and their goals by getting into medical school. So today's topic is going to be about interim results because the UCAT has recently released the 2020 interim results um, the 22nd of September 2020 um, and I'm going to be sharing with you guys the table that my dad kindly did last year while he was helping me with my application process for medicine um, about all of the statistics of the interim results and the final results of the past, I think, five years. Um, so this would help me and help yeah, help me make educated guesses on um, where to apply based on my score and make sure that my UCAT score fit the requirements of the schools that I wanted to apply to, which would then allow me to um, get an interview offer and then maybe potentially get a medical school offer. And so that's what I'm going to try to help you do today is help you make educated guesses. But then again, what I'm saying is only educated guesses. These are only interpretations. I'm not saying that if you do this 100%, you will get through the interview to the interview process because we never know what could happen um, with the whole COVID situation. We don't really know what's going to happen with the cutoff scores, etc. So just use it as a rough guide. You should always, I think, wait to send in your application until the final results have been submitted, which will be before the 15th of October either way. So yeah, now that I've talked enough, let's get into the video and let me talk to you guys about the interim results. Okay, so just before I show you guys the Google Sheets and all of that, I just wanted to explain what interim results are if you still got, if you still don't know. So basically interim results are the results that the UCAT Consortium releases at the around halfway through the testing schedule of that year and gives you all of the statistics for all of the UCAT test takers up until that point. And so this year, um, they took the statistics up until the 20th of September, 2020. And so basically this gives you a broad and generally a good idea of what the final results will be and could really help you to make your choices for your medical schools. And this is what we'll be looking at today. So basically, um, on here on this Google Sheets that you can see here. You can see kind of five different um, tables. So let me just go through all of the tables, what they are, and then let's go through the interpretation and how you can use each of these tables to make educated guesses on your scores um, and then to choose your schools. So basically the first table that we have here is where we have added all of the data to then make the next five tables, uh, four tables, sorry. And so basically in this table, we have the number of points that you need to be in each decile for the final results and then the interim results. And this goes from 2015 up until 2020, okay? Then here we have a small table which basically has the range of scores for each a year and for each final results or interim results. And the range is basically the subtraction between the number of points you need to have to be in the highest decile, so the ninth decile, and then the number of points you need to have to be in the lowest scoring decile, which is the first decile. Then this table is the one that's usually the most interesting, we'll talk about it later, which is basically the difference between the scores for the interim results and the final results. Are, is there usually an increase in score or is there usually a decrease in score? That's what we'll be looking at. Um, then here we have the table that shows us how many points you need to go from one decile to the other every single time. So for example here, 120 basically means that to go from the first decile in 2015 to the second decile you need to have an additional 120 points, basically. Um, and then here, this is uh, just an annex table that will help me explain my point in a few minutes. So let's start with the interpretation. The first table, nothing really to say because it's just data. Uh, we can't really interpret anything. Uh, we have to look at the other tables that were made from the data of this one, basically. So the first thing that we can look at is the range. So what we can see, the first thing that needs to be mentioned, sorry, is these two yellow boxes. I put these boxes in yellow because in 2016, the scoring was a bit different. I think the decision-making section didn't exist or the decision-making section was not counted um, in the test. So it means that it was not graded out of 3,600, but rather 
uh, let's say 2700 so we won't re really be looking at these to make uh, to like establish trends and averages basically but what we can see is that basically the final ranges for 2015 2017 2018 and 2019 are relatively similar with the exception of 2018 which is a 615 and then what we can also see is that if we just look at the interim results and the final results in every specific year so 2017 up until 2019, we can see that the ranges are usually the same. So 600, uh, 650, 650, 630, 630, or here there's just a slight decrease, but nothing too extraordinary, nothing too enormous. So what we can assume here for 2020 for the final results is that the score will be either 660 for the range or something around like 650, maybe 640, but that's more unlikely looking at the statistics. But then this again are just, you know, educated guesses. This is just me trying to interpret things and it's not 100% um, sure, basically. Uh, then here there is the difference between the score for the interim results and the final results. And what we can see for every single year um, is that there is always a decrease in score. So basically, um, the interim results are usually higher, um, are usually scores that are higher than the final results. And the way that I kind of interpret this, the reason why I think it is like that is because the first half of UCAT test takers are usually people that have prepared for a very long time for during the summer and wanted to get the UCAT done before school started and then just focus on the UCAT for an amount of time. Whereas the second half are maybe people that decided to do medicine a bit later, which is totally fine, and maybe had a bit less time to fully practice and focus on the UCAT because they had school as well in the middle. So maybe that's a reason also why the second half of UCAT test takers usually score lower and then bring the whole UCAT scores down, which explains why there's always a decrease. Again, this decrease here for 40 is a bit of a discrepancy. Um, just because of the 2016 issue with no decision making. But if we look at um, the scores, uh, I mean, the, di the difference between uh, for 2017 up until 2019, we can see that, first of all, in each given year, the scores are very um, similar. For example, in 2019, the decrease was either a 50 or 60 and was more often 60 than 50. Um, in 2018, it was 60 or 70. I think it was pretty much equal there. And then in 2019, it was almost always 60. And I think that if we make an average between a 50, 70, and 60 and the amount of times that they appear for each year, uh, 60 appears more often. So it's often a decrease in 60 points between the, final res the interim results and the final results for every single year. So what we can interpret here, this is just an interpretation again, this is nothing sure or anything. We can hope that this year, like every other year, the decrease will be of 60 points. Let's just say that it's of 60 points. I mean, it could be 50, it could be 70, but let's just say that it's going to be of 60 just to have a sort of average, right? Um, if we have a decrease of 60 that's uniform, just like last year here, we can hope that the final results of 2020 will be these final results here. So this means that, for example, if you're applying to a school that wants you to be in the top 30% of all UCAT test takers, for example, but your score, you were, your score was like 2,670, let's say. And so with the interim results in 2020, you are in the sixth decile, so in the top 40%, but you're not in the top 70% because your score doesn't exceed 2,710. But with the prediction, the educated guess that I'm making here, your score would very well um, enter in the top 30% of all UCAT test takers with the decrease uh, of all scores for all deciles because now if with 2,670 your score is above 2,650 which is basically uh, the boundary for being in the top 30% of all UCAT test takers. So you can kind of play with this um, make you know make maybe a table of your own to make um, the scores for 2020 decrease by maybe just 50 points or just 70 points just to see and gauge where your score could land uh, based on um, the decrease that is expected in 2020. Again, it's just expected, it's not set in stone. 
Um, and then the last uh, table that we have here is basically the um, the difference, I mean, the number of points you need to go from one decile to the other. So for example, yeah, here 220 is to go from this decile to this decile in 2015 for the final results. Again, I put in yellow the scores for 2016 because that was, again, a odd year where the verbal reasoning didn't really count, uh, decision making didn't count. So the, the statistics are a bit different, there's a discrepancy there. But if we look at all of the other statistics for 2015 final up until uh, 2020 interim, we can basically see that the amount of points to go from one decile to the other are very, very similar and don't really change. They're very homogeneous and uniform. And the other thing that we can see is that uh, if we just look at individual years, these numbers are extremely similar, uh, almost just exactly the same for each uh, jump of decile. Uh, for 2017, there's a bit of a difference here for 120, 110, 120, 110, and here as well, but the rest is pretty much the same. But for 2018 and 2019, all numbers are identical. So here we could expect in 2020 to have the same numbers as well, so to have the same numbers as well, or with maybe a slight difference. Okay, so sorry, the fire alarm went on. So I think I was just saying that basically um, with the statistics, um, the number of points that you need to go from one decile to the other won't really change. So this basically means that it is harder to go, for, let's say, from the first decile to the second, and it's also harder to go from the eighth to the ninth, with 120, but it's relatively easy to go from, I think, the 5th to the 6th. Okay, so yeah, so I think that these were all of the different statistics that I wanted to talk to you guys about. I hope that this was somewhat helpful, that you were able to follow me along, that I was relatively clear in explaining to you guys how to use these statistics to help you make educated guesses and help you make uh, your choices for your medical schools. Um, maybe there are other things that could be analyzed that I haven't done here, and if so, please write them down in the comments section to like sort of sort of um, to start a sort of conversation um, with other UCAT uh, test takers as well that are now trying to make decisions of which schools to apply to. And if you like this sort of video, please, please, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share this video with other people and other UCAT test takers that could benefit from it as well. You can also follow my socials, so my Instagram at Differently Moi, where you can, where I usually talk about mindfulness, I talk about medicine as well, and give you other different tips, but this time in writing form. So yeah, I think I'm done. Thank you very much for watching.